Uh, thank you so much, guys, for waiting. I know it must have been a really long day for you, and probably this is the last presentation you guys are attending. So I'll make it uh, completely worth your while and try to be as exciting, entertaining, goofy, and uh, nerdy as possible. So this is Demnet 2000, and we are talking about programmability with ACI. Uh, before I get started on the topic itself, uh, I'd like to introduce myself and uh, give you some background as to uh, why this topic is something that I've, uh, I'm really interested in. So my name is uh, Devarshi Shah. I'm a technical marketing engineer with INSBU, the BU that built ACI, Nexus 9000, and uh, t the cool stuff that uh, you guys have, must have heard about, tetration. Uh, so I didn't uh, exactly I started with this BU, but I was in Cisco for the past six years, so I was a developer on Nexus 7000 working with C, C++. No idea about what programmability is, what REST is, uh, all those funky stuff that goes on in the software side of things. Then I moved into uh, ASIC verification. Again, that's further away from uh, programmability, uh, REST, and how ACI works. And then suddenly, uh, I switched to marketing, and my boss is like, uh, hey, uh, we need to figure out integration, then you need to figure out and pick up on ACI. I'm like, damn, that's, uh, uh, that's challenging. That sounded challenging. But when I got to know about ACI, I went through some documentation, did some trial and error. I figured out, hey, this is a pretty cool system to work with. And uh, it's not rocket science. It's actually just understanding a file system. Uh, so before I get started, by a show of hands, uh, could I know how many of you have uh, played around with ACI, APIC? Uh, so we have quite a few members who know about ACI and APIC. Uh, and by show of hands again, uh, how many of you are developers? It could be uh, Python, C, C++. So you two guys will keep me honest. Uh, so uh, let's get started on uh, this, this journey with me. So first, what I'll be going through is uh, some basics about ACI, because we have a lot of folks in the audience who are kind of aware of ACI, what SDN is. But uh, I'll give them a brief overview of uh, the entire solution. Second, uh, I'll go into the details of how uh, constructs in ACI are modeled and how they turn into APIs. Third is uh, REST. Uh, how many of you guys here are familiar with uh, REST? So I think it's a good level set. If need be, please stop me. Let me know if you need explanation on some of these concepts. I'll be glad to help you out with that. Uh, third, once we've figured out what REST APIs do, we'll move into Python bindings for uh, ACI and show you cool stuff that can be done with Python and REST APIs and some SDK that uh, INSP has built to programmatically uh, read and write stuff into ACI. And trust me, it's not rocket science. If a person like me with a hardware background can learn programmatic APIs, REST APIs, I think it's, it's a breeze in the park for you guys who are way smarter with networks than I am. Uh, so this is what we are going to cover. And uh, hopefully, we will be able to cover everything in uh, time. So what ACI is, uh, is a switching fabric which has services uh, which you expect of a switching fabric, like uh, debugging, logging, monitoring, uh, L3, uh, L2, VMs, uh, L4 to L7 services. All of that is present in ACI. And this fabric is basically governed by a controller called APIC. So you have a controller, a god box running on top of it, uh, and you have these leaf spine switches uh, for ACI, these are Nexus 9000 series of switches. And all the policies, everything that you have on these fabric switches is abstracted out by ACI, the APIC controller. And all you get to see is simple views of how applications work and perform in your network. You don't have to deal with underlays, overlays, VXLAN, BGP. All that is abstracted out and done by ACI for you guys. So. Uh, 
first off, uh, I will jump directly into uh, programmability and how we came about designing ACI. So we have two components to it. First is the APIC controller that's running on top, and then we have uh, the fabric that's running underneath it. So the smart guys at NCME, this was way before I joined, uh, decided that we will take a bottom-up approach in uh, designing ACI and making it programmable from day one. So what you have is the forwarding plane has a set of APIs which are sent out to the control plane. So you have uh, your regular pro protocols like OSPF, LLDP, BGP running, which use these uh, APIs to create a forwarding path in your network. So from A to B, that's done. Now, with th these control plane, uh, uh, this control plane working, uh, these guys decided, OK, we need to add another layer of abstraction on top of it. So they added another set of APIs on top of the control plane, which will be exposed to the controller sitting on top. That is APIC. Uh, any questions till now? Uh, is everyone following, sleeping? Do you want some coffee? Uh, I guess I'll take that as a yes. Uh, so uh, we have these APIs being uh, sent out to the controller. Now, what controller does it uh, is it guarantees that uh, whatever you program in your network is consistent across your entire fabric. So we have, uh, because of that reason, we have two sets of APIs. First is uh, the read APIs, where you can get the extract, uh, you can extract information from this fabric. And then you have write APIs where you write into the controller, but not the fabric, since we want to have consistency across the network. And we don't want any other players just logging into one switch, writing, and messing up everything. So we come with two sets of APIs. First is read APIs and write APIs. Read APIs get you information about the fabric. Write APIs uh, help you provision uh, the policies that govern this particular fabric. So this was uh, the idea behind the ACI, uh, uh, API structure. Now, uh, you must be thinking, hey, uh, these APIs are pretty cryptic, and not many users would be using it. Uh, so again, the smart guys at NCME decided, hey, we want to make an example out of this. So we will have our GUI for APIC controller, our test harness, and our CLI all using these REST APIs, which are available to every APIC user. So that is uh, the fundamental uh, design premise of uh, ACI. Uh, the, Python, the bindings for GUI are uh, JavaScript, and you have REST, uh, pure REST running on top of it. CLI, again, is Python. You have pure REST running on top of it. And test harness uh, is a suite of two, two 2,322 tests, I made sure I remember that number, uh, running on top of uh, the REST APIs that are exposed by APIC. Uh, again, if you are not familiar with Python, Python bindings, all these cryptic words, don't worry about it. In due course, there are tools which take the data, convert it, and throw out a Python code for you. So again, uh, this is emphasizing on the read-write architecture of the APIs. So you, the blue icon is the blue lines are basically write APIs. You can write directly into APIC, but you can't write directly into uh, Spine for uh, GUI as well as APIs. CLIs, you can do that. Uh, then you have APIC writing directly to the fabric layer. And you have other services like call home, export, syslogs, uh, monitoring. Uh, being sent out from APIC as well as the leaf, the leaf spine architecture. Uh, now, uh, I have a question here. So, how many of uh, how many of you uh, in the audience here have uh, seen like actual live deployments of data centers? What's usually the scale of the deployment uh, of a data center? How many nodes do you have? How many nodes do you have in a usual deployment? Uh, not ACI, just, just in general. How many uh, deployment nodes do you have? You, is it in a scale of tens or hundreds? Hundreds, right? So with these, let's say, 100 nodes, you want to make sure 
everything is correctly provisioned. Uh, if something misbehaves, uh, if you don't have a correct model or a correct approach, it's pretty difficult to find, right? Would, wouldn't you say so? Uh, so what uh, ACI inventors or ACI designers did was they created a model uh, which every element in your ACI fabric has to confirm to. Uh, so for example, let's say if you have a switch, uh, within a switch you have a chassis. So chassis, chassis has a line card. Line card has an interface, uh, a physical ethernet interface, and ethernet interface has speed. Uh, based on your hardware, you can say, uh, you can either have one gig 10 gig or 40 gig speed. Uh, if you decide or some malicious user decides uh, that I want to have the speed of uh, 100 gigs, which is usually coming now, uh, and tries to inject that ele element into your fabric, uh, the ACI model, it rejects it because it has to confirm to this particular set of rules. And that is what the model does. So, uh, how many of you are aware of uh, or used uh, Linux Unix file systems? I guess almost everyone. Uh, so, in, uh, in Linux, you have the root or the top directory where the file system is mounted. And within that, you have subdirectories. Uh, and within those subdirectories, you have further subdirectories and then files, right? And uh, usually are uh, limited to uh, that file system. So what ACI did was come up with something similar. So you have a naming convention that's pretty similar to uh, the Unix file system. So every element, uh, be it an interface, Ethernet, or some funky ACI construct like uh, tenant, endpoints, profiles, EPGs, uh, is an object which resides within a hierarchy. Uh, and each object or each of these constructs, I think uh, for uh, the, the, the wider audience, it would make sense to classify interface Ethernet as an object. In your entire fabric, let's say uh, you have leaf one, interface Ethernet one slash one uh, is an object. Now, that object usually has a set of properties, which are key value pairs. So uh, if I correlate this to uh, the CLI world, if you go into uh, the CLI and do a conf t interface ethernet one slash one, and then do a show run of interface ethernet one slash one, you see a bunch of uh, things, right? Like IP address, uh, no shot, uh, you uh, have the speed, the MTU, all those things, right? So all these attributes are uh, basically properties in the object that is created in ACI. So you can have a set of values. So let's say if you're trying to assign VLAN uh, some value greater than 4096, the CLI will throw an error out at you saying that it can't do this. That's what the model does as well. So it says you're trying to assign an invalid value. You can't do this. So you have to confirm to the rules of the model. Uh, so that is one object. Another property of an object is uh, an object can have another object at, at within itself. So uh, I'll draw a parallel to uh, the CLI world as well. So uh, interface, Ethernet, and then you have uh, MTU, or uh, probably I'm running short of examples. So maybe you can give me an example of a feature. Uh, Duplex. OK. So uh, we have duplex. You can't set it without going into interface Ethernet, right? So duplex is another managed object within interface. So you can create an entire hierarchy or a chain uh, through these rules on, of these managed objects in ACI. Now, an instance of these managed objects is called a management information tree, which has relationships to different objects. So uh, interface Ethernet is related to uh, probably a line card. So it has a parent-child relationship. 
line card is related to a uh, chassis. It has a parent-child relationship. Uh, a chassis can have multiple line cards. So you have a parent-child relationship between that particular chassis and uh, the various line cards that are residing. So we form a hierarchy of these objects within ACI. And uh, those objects form, this hierarchy forms the crux of the APIs that we are exposing for uh, users to programmatically use API. So if you understand uh, the hierarchy of managed objects, it's pretty easy to understand uh, APIs uh, in the ACI world. There's a lot of APIs and ACIs going on. Uh, so this is an instance of uh, management information tree. So there are two universes in uh, uh, ACI. First is uh, all the cool stuff about policies, tenants, uh, uh, ACI-related stuff. And the second is the fabric universe, which uh, I'll be talking more about, uh, where you have the node information, the power supply information, uh, the interface information, all those things. So there's a top level object, and then you have a chain of objects being created, or a tree of objects being created, and that forms the management information tree in ACI. And uh, the relationship between each and every object defines this tree. Uh, when you are programming ACI, I don't know how many of you have actually worked with uh, ACI and writing Python code with it, anyone? So you see these uh, funky terms, right? FV tenant and uh, FV VRF. So what that FV stands for is fabric virtualization. It denotes a particular area in which that class belongs. So this, this kind of explains it. So you have a uh, zone for uh, VMs, a physical fabric. So you have, if it's starting with fabric, it's part of the fabric universe going this way. So now, uh, bringing this all together, uh, let's say we have uh, another ACI construct, endpoint group, uh, is part of policy universe. Uh, and policy universe has a tenant which has multiple children to it. So if I want to uniquely identify uh, an element in this particular tree, all I need to do is traverse this tree and bring it all together. So it'll be uh, uni tenant, and the name of the tenant right here, the name of the uh, AP, and name of the application endpoint. So all you need to do is, if you want to modify this particular endpoint, get this path and say, hey, read or write, or get values from it. Uh, again, for uh, the fabric universe, uh, you have uh, the fabric topology, the fabric pod, and the fabric uh, EP count. So here, in this example, what you see is we go into topology, switch is pod 1, uh, path 1 or 2, and path EP for uh, 1 slash 3. So if you want to read this value, you can just give this particular API and say, hey, uh, give me the values for it. What are the values programmed within this interface? Uh, any questions till now? Uh, because it's really important for us to understand manage objects and how this tree is structured in ACI before we go deeper into uh, Python and REST APIs. Any questions? Uh, I'll go forward. So uh, how many of, uh, so should I go into the details of REST APIs or should I just uh, uh, jump into the crux of it uh, for ACI. So REST is basically an industry standard for communicating between two systems. So let's say if you want to, I'll give you an example of uh, Twitter. You want to write a code where you want to get tweets from all the, all the members who are using the word uh, CLUS or CL uh, Cisco Live uh, Europe, you'll write a REST API call, which will go ahead and call that. So it's, it's, this REST API is supported across all platforms. It's not just network centric. It's supported across uh, various softwares. So it's an industry standard which runs on top of HTTP and uh, has two ports, port 80 and port 443. Uh, 
So what uh, we've done with uh, ACI is we've given uh, two REST or three uh, basic REST support. First is uh, uh, GET, where you get the information from uh, the ACI model. Uh, this guarantees that there's no change in uh, whatever constructs are there on ACI. Second is POST, where you can uh, give in some blob of data and say, I want to program ACI with this blob of data. And you do a POST. It goes to uh, APIC. APIC does its own magic. And voila, you have uh, that there. And uh, third is delete. So let's say if you want to delete something in uh, ACI, all you need to do is pass in uh, the API, say delete, and it will go ahead and delete that particular object from uh, the APIC. Now, if you're forming a REST uh, schema, there are mutable and immutable parts to it. So the immutable part in this URL is the protocol that you have and the host, uh, which in our case will be the APIC IP, uh, along with the port number. So usually we work with port 80 and 443, but if you want to enable other ports uh, on APIC, you can still do that as well. Uh, then this is the immutable part. Then comes the mutable part, which is uh, the end point or the start point called API. So with this start point, uh, you can get into the programmability aspects of uh, ACI. Uh, so this supports, uh, uh, how, how do I put it? Uh, so yeah, everything that you want to do with a Python script needs to start with this. Uh, the third part is how do you identify uh, the particular object that you want to uh, vary? Uh, so let me give you an example. Uh, so yesterday night, I went to this uh, really good German restaurant. And the way I came across it is a friend of mine just texted me that address. Hey, uh, elephant, uh, restaurant elephant, this is the address. Be there. And I got amazing German food. I had all the information about that restaurant. But now what if I want to go ahead and find out a list of German restaurants, right? So I need to know, uh, I, I go to Yelp and say, give me a list of all the German restaurants that are there. So this kind of acts as uh, that segregator. So MO is basically managed object which identifies the object directly. In my case, it was the restaurant. In case of ACI, it could be interface Ethernet 1 slash uh, 1. And class identifies the class of interfaces uh, or class of restaurants. So I could say class interfaces and it will give me a list of all the interfaces that are there or I can read to all the interfaces or write to all these interfaces. Once you have, you decide whether you want to use a managed object or a class of uh, uh, objects, you give uh, the designate, uh, the, uh, the name uh, and the, or the class name for it. And then you have the encoding after that. So you want to pass in the data and get the response using uh, JSON or XML. Uh, and then you have other filter options. So uh, the way you form a query here is I want to get information about uh, the EPG uh, called download. So what I'll do is I'll identify it by its distinguished name. First, I'll give in the protocol, then my APIC IP address, then uh, start point of API. Then I'm identifying it directly based on the name. So it will go under managed objects category here. Uh, and then within managed objects, I have a universe uh, which will map to a tenant Cisco AP software. And then within that, we identify EPG. So this is the way where we just get the address of uh, the German restaurant that I got. This is one way. The second way is. Uh, I need to find out a list of all the physical interfaces with speed uh, of 10 gigs. If I try to use this approach, I'll have to write this API probably multiple times and change the value here. Because I don't know uh, all the interfaces with 10 gigs. So it's, it's basically a redundant operation. So what I do is I use class instead. So what I do with class is, uh, hey, APIC. Uh, go into API endpoint, get me uh, use classes, and 
get me physical interfaces which have uh, 10 gigs. So physical interface is the class. It'll go into the class, look at it. We have a list of physical interfaces. It'll go ahead and put this filter on top, which is L1 physical interfaces with speed of 10G. And in response, you'll get a JSON or an XML blob, uh, here, XML blob of all the physical interfaces which have uh, speed of 10 gig. So this is how it's, uh, the APIs are designed and uh, they work on object model. Uh, any questions till now? Uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, credential as well. So credential will fall under the manage object. Uh, and I'll, I'm getting into, I'll get into the details of it. So what I have planned is I have some code snippets that I've worked on. And uh, those code snippets will first walk you through logging in and then uh, basically other creation tasks. Uh, so the question was, uh, what about uh, uh, credentials and login? So again, this is uh, going back to my earlier point of uh, the operations that we support uh, with REST. Uh, most, except for GET, all other operations are ID important, which means uh, if I do a post uh, with some value and then again do a post with the same value, AC ACI will neglect that and treat it as the same thing. So there won't be any addition or subtraction or change uh, to that particular uh, object in ACI. Delete the same way. Once I've deleted something, I can't delete it again. Uh, and get is a null portent, which means I get the information and it doesn't change anything on the system. So here we come to uh, login, AAA login. So again, this is classified under uh, managed objects. Uh, distinguished name is AAA login, and then you have the encoding. Here what we are doing is uh, we're giving in this data of uh, AAA user admin, and the password is insimi. And what you get in return from the APIC is a token, which you need to use in each and every one of your uh, REST messages to APIC thereafter. And this token expires every uh, five minutes. So you need to refresh this every five minutes. So this is keeping in mind the security aspect of it, so that if one session is open or one uh, uh, AAA login is open, it doesn't stay open for indefinite period of time. So next up is create and uh, update operations. So again, if you want to create something, uh, you need to pass in the payload. So what this example does is uh, it creates a three-tier application. So in order to create a three-tier application in ACI, you need to create a tenant, uh, an application profile under that tenant. Uh, I know these, these terms are alien to you, but stick with me for a bit. Uh, and you create an endpoint group, and within that endpoint group, you basically create the relationship. So if I were to translate this into uh, uh, how a stand standalone network would operate, uh, tenant is basically a tenant that you guys have in your uh, data center. Uh, endpoint group is a bunch of endpoints or servers or VMs which perform the same task together. So you bundle them together in one endpoint group. All those entities will be able to communicate into each other without any uh, rules or L3 routes being set up. And then you have, on top of it, the application profile. So uh, let's say if it's a three-tier application, WordPress, you have DB, uh, HA proxy, and you have uh, uh, the web uh, Apache web server. So you can tie this particular endpoint group into an application that you want to create. So in our case, it will be WordPress. So this is basically a three-tier application creation within ACI. So if I want to do that through uh, REST APIs, what I'll do is I'll create my HTTP request, give an API. The manage object will be uh, uh, the universe, uh, uni, and then I'll just pass in this data. This will go ahead and create a tenant. Uh, an application profile, 
an EPG under it. That's it. Like you don't need anything else. And the best part about programmability or using these sort of APIs is uh, scalability. Let's say if you want to create 100 tenants or 100 applications, which is pretty general in a data center, usual in a data center. All you can do is you can create a tenant first and then copy paste these lines, have uh, basically an iterator here and say, just run this in a loop. That's it. Instead of going into the CLI, typing it manually a gazillion times or going into APIC GUI and doing it each and every time again. That's, that's the simplicity of uh, REST APIs and programmability. Uh, again, read operations. So uh, what we are doing here is we are reading. Uh, so this is the same example which I gave earlier. Reading from EPG download and reading from uh, the fabric side of things with uh, all the physical interfaces which have a speed of 10 gig. Now, again, another thing that's really important is since we have so many different constructs within ACI and each of these objects could have multiple instances of it. For example, interface, uh, physical interfaces could have, we could have spans of uh, hundreds of physical interfaces. You need to identify how to query uh, those objects. So first is we can, within the query itself, we can pass self. So here, uh, I can say query target filter equal to, uh, or query uh, self and this particular class this particular uh, object. That will give me the information for this. Now, if I want to query subchildren within that, uh, let's say if I want information not just about physical interfaces, if I want information about uh, uh, the MTUs within those physical interfaces, other aspects within those physical interfaces, uh, I'll say include the children in my response. And then uh, if there are children within those, uh, or other properties within those sub properties, I'll say the subtree. So all you need to do here is uh, change query target filter. And you can iterate through the entire tree and get a response depending and, and uh, get a response depending on uh, the level of uh, visibility you want. Uh, now, another thing is you would tell me, hey, Devarshi, this is all cool. Uh, now you have hundreds of objects in ACI, and let's say someone goes ahead and changes it. Do I need to run my code in a loop to go iterate through each and every one of those objects? Uh, do I need to know about each and every one of those objects, uh, even the objects which I'm not interested in? Uh, the answer is no. We can subscribe to a particular object instead of uh, the old-fashioned way of looping every X number of seconds. Uh, and what the subscription does is, whenever there is a change to that particular object, we get notified about it. Uh, and the way you do it in Python is you create a web socket. So you create a subscription to this particular object. In this case, I'm creating a subscription to class tenant uh, by passing this, this particular REST message, where subscription is yes. And then I create a web socket and assign that web socket, uh, assign this subscription to that web socket. And the response that I get is here. So whenever something changes in tenant, uh, I get the information about the entire tenant. So that is how uh, subscription works. And you don't need to iterate or loop through everything. You can just pick and choose from what you want or what you want the updates about. Please go ahead. Uh, good question. So what uh, usually when I write my code, what I do is I fork out separate threads. One thread which will continuously uh, go ahead and refresh the subscription or refresh the uh, token. And the second thread is looking for subscri subscription. So once I refresh uh, the token, uh, it will go ahead and pass it in every subsequent REST request that goes through uh, to APIC. Uh, so the question here was, again, I'll, I'll uh, clarify on that. Uh, what about subscription for uh, the login token? Uh, 
So now, uh, again, uh, you'd say, oh, this is all cool. I can write subscriptions. I can uh, do programmatically uh, a lot of things with these a APIs. But how do I find the APIs? Like, you, have, you say you have hundreds of constructs in ACI. How do I find those APIs? So the way to do it is, uh, first is you log into the APIC. And through CLI, uh, you can find that out. So you go into APIC, SSH into it, uh, go into this ACI directory, and you can get uh, the entire tree here by doing ls and going down the file system. Uh, the second way to do it is there's something called as Visore, a tool that we built in order to view the management uh, information tree. So all you do is you give uh, your APIC IP and then Visore.html, which will show up uh, a page like this where top system, you can go into uh, uh, the DN, you can go into other objects that are there. So you just click and go down the tree. Uh, so these are two ways of looking at it. The third way of looking at it is, which is not on the slide, is something called as an API inspector. So what we do on the API GUI is, uh, let me see if uh, this thing is working, if I can log into my API. No, I don't think so. So what it does is, uh, on the GUI, uh, you go into API Inspector. It'll open up a separate window. Now, whenever you click something on the GUI, some object, uh, on the separate window, you will get uh, the entire REST message for that. And you can pick and choose that REST message and put it in your code. So you don't need to go ahead and browse either uh, the MO query or Visore. I want to go into tenant, so I'll just click on tenant, and then I'll get the rest messages for tenant itself. So that is the third way of doing it. I think I should add it in my slide deck. Uh, again, this is, uh, these are the tools that are available uh, for normal REST operations. It not, it's not just limited to ACI or APIC. You have something called as Postman, which is used across the industry. You can do get, post, delete all those funky, uh, cool things uh, with Postman. And then you can use it through curl as well. And you can create your request and responses and send it out. Uh, now, uh, how many of you are interested in a code walkthrough of uh, uh, how we use these APIs? OK. So your question here, AAA login. We need to import two, uh, two libraries. First is JSON, and the second is requests. We are creating the base APIC URL, so this will be used across all our requests. Uh, then we are creating a payload with uh, the user credentials. So we have, I'm logging in as George Eva, and this is the password. And I'm dumping it in the JSON format. So when I'm creating the message, I either need to create it in XML or JSON. So in this case, I've decided I'll create it in JSON format. Uh, now I take this particular payload that I've created and insert it in my request. So request is a library already created, so you don't need to worry about uh, all the bits and bytes of it. So you just put it in the request and do a post. Once you do a post, uh, you get a response back from APIC saying, hey, uh, your credentials have gone through or they haven't gone through. And if they've gone through, uh, this is the token that you'll get. So we parse that token here and assign it to auth token. So this code is pretty generic. This code snippet can be used by you. Just copy paste it as is and it'll work. The only thing that you need to change here is this name and password. It'll work. Uh, once we get that, we need uh, something called as a cookie, which, which I will uh, go into later. I think it's it's slightly advanced topic. But uh, once we've gotten the token, we pass uh, uh, the cookie generated by token uh, into uh, the requests or the API messages that we want to send to APIC to play around with uh, the managed objects or the classes. So here, I'm getting information about uh, the sensor on uh, uh, board on a board in a slot on chassis on a node one. So we'll send the, uh, we'll send the URL and get a, request, a response for it. So you can print out that response. Uh, replicating it into tens of hundreds of nodes, what you can do is uh, you can do a get on 
uh, the class node. You get all the node information. It will be in the JSON format, and then you can parse through or write an iteration loop saying, hey, just go through it. Or the second thing you could do is uh, within the class itself, you can uh, create a query. So we can create a query. Oh, where did the query go? Yeah, a query here, uh, which includes the subtree, and then filter equal to uh, uh, physical interfaces or uh, that board. How are we doing on time? Uh, I think I have uh, just a few minutes to wrap everything up. Uh, sure. What APIC should I connect to? So this is, uh, this is the out-of-band management uh, address of the APIC. Uh, yeah, it, no, uh, you, you can connect to either one. Any of them, out of three. You, you usually have a cluster of three, right? Yeah. yeah, you can connect to either one of them. So now you tell me, yeah, this is all uh, well and good, but I hate programming, or I have too little time to develop a Python code, uh, or just make it simple for me. So what uh, we've done is we've come up with a Python adapter where you create this post message and plug it into something called as ARIA, and it will generate the Python code for you. So you don't have to worry about coding it or uh, making sure that your syntax is fine or even knowing the programming language. All you need to do is you generate this code and do a Python on this file, and it will run the entire code for you. So that tool is available online, uh, free on GitHub. So there's nothing attached to it, no, nothing, no monetary costs attached to it. And I highly recommend you guys go check it out. Uh, now, another thing is uh, REST APIs can have their limitations, as in when we saw this example, we were creating or uh, we had to know the domain name of this entire uh, object, right? We needed to know this entire thing. Uh, and we needed to create the login first, do a request post, then do a JSON load, get the request, and parse through this data, right? So what, uh, in order to simplify ACI operation, what uh, uh, Tom Etzel and his team has done, have done is create an SDK. Uh, so everything within the model is abstracted to you. And you only call the required uh, objects. So let me give you an example. Login session is just this. You don't need to go ahead, do a post. All the abstraction of REST, where you do post and get, is, uh, is, is, is taken out of your view. All you do is create a session, uh, given the APIC, bind it to a particular uh, uh, login, and voila, you have it. So here we are defining the APIC to which we are writing. We are creating the login session and storing the credentials. And then we are linking it to the APIC. Uh, another thing is uh, you don't need to give the entire path. You can do a lookup by distinguished name, or you can do a lookup by class, just like restaurant uh, address of the German restaurant versus a list of German restaurants. Uh, third thing is uh, you can push in the data in this format. You don't need to know JSON. So these are some of the features that are there in uh, uh, the SDK. I'm not doing justice to the SDK right now because I think we are running short on time. Uh, but the documentation for SDK is available at the end of the slide. Uh, it's available on your APIC. So if you go to your APIC URL and do a slash Cobra, uh, you get the entire documentation there. Uh, and uh, I'll just skim through this slide. And this is just an example of creating a tenant. So you import libraries from Cobra. You create a universal object, pass in the tenant information, and bam. You don't need to know everything where the tenant is located and uh, pass through the API. So this is the power of SDK that they've uh, developed on top of uh, APIC.
you had a question? Okay. Again, uh, this is the three-tier application, so you don't need to know uh, the JSON blob that we saw earlier uh, to create a three-tier application. This this does it for you. So I highly recommend if you guys are planning to use ACI or Cobra, use these slides. Use these slides as a template. Try this code out and see uh, how you feel about it. Again, these are the references that we have. I encourage you to go check it out if you're uh, really excited to know about programming, ACI, not just ACI, but uh, how REST works. Uh, these are some good uh, tools and pointers. And again, uh, session evaluations. I know it's, it's the worst part. I usually don't do it, but I encourage you to go do it. Uh, and I would really appreciate if you give me an honest feedback. So next time, we could work on this session and help you out better. Yeah, and uh, you can continue your education in DevNet Zone. Uh, we have some brilliant minds here working on ACI, some of the smartest people in the industry. And I encourage you to go talk to them, understand about uh, not just ACI, but networking as well. Uh, I guess that's the end of my presentation. I hope uh, you don't think of programming as some rocket science and at least uh, we'll go take a look, approach it, and try playing around with it. Thank you.